Excellent. Good evening, everybody. We're going to call to order tonight's meeting of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, the first uh, order of business is the flag salute. So please stand if you can. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with the requirement of the open public meeting law, notice of this meeting of the Board of Adjustment of the Township of Bernard's where it was posted on the bulletin board in the reception hall in the municipal building in Collier Lane, Basking Ridge, New Jersey. It was also mailed to the Bernardsville News, Whippany, New Jersey, the Courier News, Bridgewater, New Jersey, and it was also filed with the township clerk all on January 5th of this year. And it was also mailed electronically to all those people who had requested individual notice. The following procedure has been adopted by the Bernard's uh, Township Zoning Board of Adjustment. There will be no new cases heard after 10 p.m. tonight and no new testimony heard after 10.30. Uh, Ms. Keever, can I ask you to do a roll call for us? Certainly. Um, Mr. Tancredi, Mr. Halverson, and Ms. Herrera have indicated that they are not unable to attend this evening. Ms. Uh, Chairwoman Janiers. Here. Ms. Bauman. Here. Mr. Cambria. Here. Mr. Krause. Here. Mr. Pavlovsky? Here. Ms. Pakhtar? Here. Mr. Sobieski? Present. Mr. Quinn? Here. Mr. Schley? Here. And for the record, Ms. Kiefer is present. You have a quorum. You may proceed. Thank you, Ms. Kiefer. Um, I would entertain a motion to um, excuse. I think we had three notices uh, for the three who could not attend today. Motion to approve the excused absences of the three Thanks, uh, Mr. members. Thanks, I'll second it. Thanks, Ms. Pakhtar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is 5A, which is Lembo uh, ZB23008. I believe we are carrying this to the July 13th meeting without uh, any additional notice. Is that correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. That meeting, or I'm sorry, that hearing is being carried, like you said, to July 13th, 2023. Uh, as, we, as I understand it, both the publication and mail notice of that hearing were properly uh, issued. So uh, this is the notice if you're here for uh, the limbo hearing that is not being here tonight. Like we said, it's being heard on July 13th. Perfect. Thank same you. time, same place. Same place. Thank you. Uh, next is 5B, which is the Basking Ridge Presbyterian um, Church, which is ZB23007. Similarly, I believe we are carrying that, although to the September 6th meeting, Correct. and um, also uh, no additional notice required? That is correct, Madam Chair. Both the publication and uh, mail notice were sent out. Both were sufficient. Thus, if you were here to hear, uh, here to, for the uh, Basking Ridge Presbyterian Church application, that is not being heard tonight. That is going to be heard on September 6th, which is not that long away. That is true. And no. I, I know the schedule has been no. bouncing around a little no. bit. So yeah. we're doing our best to keep the public uh, yeah. Transparent with with our schedule. Exactly. Um, same time, plus same place. Got to put right it on there. Exactly. Um, next up is uh, a case that's not being carried. Uh, it is 5C Cordano, uh, which is ZB23006. <coughs> Are you guys here? Come on up. Okay. My notes now. All right. Can we get everybody sworn in, please, gentlemen? If you're going to be testifying, let's get our board professionals as well. Please, all raise your right hands. Thank you very much. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, Good evening. We're going to ask you, um, if you can, you could either stand here or you can sit down in front of that microphone, but we're going to ask you to speak right into the microphone so that everybody can hear you, and it's also being recorded, so we'll do our best to remind you of that. No, if you use that one, unmute it. It's muted right now. Just press the button. Hold it down. There you go. You can turn green. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Terrific. Okay. Good. All right. Well, good evening. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Gene Cordano. I've been here for uh, quite a while now, since 2011. We love the town, and we embarked on a project to renovate my house uh, about two years ago. Mr. Cordano, real quick, could I get your uh, your address, please, for the record? Yes. 177 White Neck Road, uh, Bernard's. Thank you very much. Thank and the gentleman with you, is he uh, architect, engineer? My architect, Jim Ramitol. Okay. Right, well, let's let you introduce the application, then I'll, I'll get his qualifications. We'll have him submit it. Anyway, so uh, 
as I was saying, uh, we've, we've started a project, we're in construction now, um, and uh, I'm here tonight uh, for a coverage variance over a previously approved patio for a roof, which will finish it off nicely. And you were your setback, yes. Covered. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. This is why uh, this is my wingman. So in any event, um, I appreciate you hearing it, and I turn it over to, uh, to Jim Ramenthal, please. Mr. Ramenthal? Ramenthal, yes. Ramenthal, could you please provide the board with your qualifications? Yes, I'm a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey since 1979. <clears throat> I am the principal of the firm of GRA Architects, uh, which has been in existence since 1995. And I've uh, been in front of many, many boards. I don't know if I've been in front of this board, and if it's what, it's been a long, long time ago. but. Uh, I, I'm following through on the project, and uh, I have uh, my license is current, and uh, in good standing as well. I, I would assume. Yes. Fantastic. And can I get your business address, please, just for the record? Yes, three ten Springfield Two Avenue, computers. Suite twelve, Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, zero seven nine two two. Perfect. Perfect. We will um, accept you as a, as an architect in front of our board. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Um, are you going to take us through um, what you're asking for here? Yes, Madam Chairman. Uh, I think I'd like to do that uh, simply. As uh, as Mr. Cordano properly corrected himself, we are here before a, for a rear yard setback, not a coverage setback. Uh, the majority of this project, uh, because it it uh, it is it develops not only uh, it's adjacent to wet wetlands, we have um, wetland delineation, we have repairing access, and we received all those approvals a couple of years ago. I have documentation on it, but in order to get the initial construction permit, which is the lion's share of the project, those were all approved by various members of the uh, township's uh, engineering and planning commi commission, et cetera. Um, si simply put, uh, if I may, I'm, may I stand or to Yes, please, yep, please Just do. Uh, bring the microphone with you if you, if you <coughs> can. Oh, it, it's moved, it's moved. I'm not sure how much length you're going to have. Well, there, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring the joints closer yeah. to me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I, I could stand and point, or to sit and point, make it easy. Okay, um, as you can see, it's a significant project. Th this footprint here, this dashed line in the center, it was the original two story existing home, and the darker uh, impressions in the front as well as in the rear. Uh, were additions that we added to the house. Can I just to ask you, is this an exact replica of what we have in our packet? It is should be. It should different? be, yeah. If you okay. follow along, right. it should be. I'm just going to be generous. Uh, down below on the, let's see, do I have this north arrow here? I'll just say to the to the bottom or south portion, I think it is the south actually, because I think north it heads due directly above. Uh, there is an existing uh, 424 square foot patio that was added. Uh, during the course of the design, we, rec we recognized that uh, by placing a roof over it, which was always the intent, we would be, uh, we would have to go for a variance. So what we chose to do for the initial application is remove the, the um, remove the roof, which was encumbering the rear at setback, and just designed it as is. So literally what has been approved as far as um, additional impervious coverage, et cetera, et cetera, had pre previously been approved, and all we're really doing is placing the roof that was originally designed on it in, in, in a simple nutshell, if you will. Uh, this, this radial driveway, which was added and part of the application, uh, went through all of the engineering uh, stormwater management requirements. It was, in fact, designed by a professional engineer, and in fact, just recently in the last two weeks, that system was, was in fact, installed. Uh, it was reviewed by the engineer who designed it. A letter is, is I think, on record. I'm not sure if the, board, if the township has it yet, but I do know that the uh, township uh, engineer came out uh, seeking whether or not it, it had been re reviewed. So that, that's really, that's in a sidebar to what we're talking about. So we're really here today uh, to talk and I about- I think Mr. Quinn's memo also asked to confirm that there would be no additional coverage based upon- Right, right? It's, it, they're, they're, the, the good news is in this particular case, there's zero coverage because we already had the patio covered, designed, and, and not installed yet, but it's in its rough grade right now. Um, the, in, in the, I think it was the, I'm sure if it's the planner's letter or the, let's see whose letter it was. I believe it was the, let me get my very right. 
It was the Township Planner's letter. Uh, uh, Dave, is that, that's you. We we wouldn't, I, we haven't met. That's <laughs> right. Well, I figured one of you two were there, so I knew I'd get it right with one of the two of you. Um, talked about uh, the, uh, the application, or I should say the, um, in 1999, and prior to that, the, the rear yard setback was 75 feet, so we would have been in compliance. Subsequent to that, it's gone to 100 feet, so we're now 10.12 feet over that requirement. So we're seeking a variance literally for that rear yard setback. Uh, from an from a overall perspective and in terms of, of any problems with other neighbors, we have no neighbors to our rear because I believe that's township property, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, 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 but certainly not ever developable. So, and we have we have a, a riparian to our west, and a neighbor who is significantly uh, further away to the right uh, of the property. So, uh, in essence, we don't believe that this particular addition, which was part of the design to begin with, uh, would have any significant impact on any property in the area. And and it's a I wouldn't call the a 10-foot setback uh, request, a de minimis request, but it's certainly minimal. And, uh, for, I, and I, you, you, you probably have seen, since you have the images in front of you, I'll just share that with you. This is, you don't have this, this is a document I just brought with me just in case this was a survey. Um, we don't necessarily need to put this in the record unless you'd like it to be, but I uh, Yeah, once you, once you show it, we kind of have we put to. it in there? Okay, since yeah. we've shown it. It's so we'll mark that as exhibit, A1. yeah, A1. There, it was it if it was submitted then yeah uh, yes then that I the date of it is uh, let's see the latest date let me find it here. Uh, let's see I have I have seven no it can't be that sure that's let me find it. I'm looking searching <coughs> let's see what I have here. it's at the top of the title board the left um, Seven twenty-eight eleven. Oh, so yeah, seven twenty-eight eleven. That's that's the one I thought. Of, so that sounds like. Yeah. Do you have an updated? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Thank you for that. Yeah, twelve twenty-three fifteen two thousand fifteen. So that, that that's what we, we have. That. Okay. Yeah. And you have that side here. So, so I don't know really exactly. Mark then. this as evidence since we have it. Thank you. Okay. You should have SP one, which is basically a a more just generic. Architects' interpretation of the of the site plan and what we're doing here, and this sort of highlights the darker image on the south. Just highlights where the the uh, roof covering is. Uh, this is actually a construction drawing because we're into working drawings, and it just shows uh, the detail of what's happening here. We have a covered uh, patio, four skylights, two columns, which actually have been put in place. But you know, if if this didn't get approved. There wouldn't be a roof on there. It would be as simple as that. We'd remove it. And last but not least, uh, the A4 sheet, which indicates what the uh, rear uh, patio roof is going to look like. It's sort of a, a truss-like structure that will be an open structure that it just allows the to read into the house. Uh, that's really that's the essence of the presentation in a more formal way. So I'm certainly willing to take any questions that the board might have, and I'll hold it at that. Uh, I have a housekeeping related question. Uh, you guys also submitted this series of photographs with yes. the application, correct? Yes. Just want to authenticate these accurately. Per Number one, where were they taken? Oh, I guess the dates on there are self explanatory. Uh, well, I'll, I'll find them in here somewhere. I, I took them personally, so they're, they're my photographs. Let me, let me look at them again to see exactly. I could roughly identify when they would have been taken. Mm -hmm. They weren't recent. I can pretty much assure you that. But let's take a peek. Okay, yes. Uh, these are images, uh, as you can see, pre-construction and during construction. Mm -hmm. uh, you do all have those. I would say that probably, well, the, the, the earlier versions were taken probably a couple, three, four years ago. Uh, the construction images, well, it's dated here, uh, 92622, which was the lower left-hand image. And uh, the lower right-hand image was, uh, was uh, February 7th of this year. And uh, the photographs accurately depict the property as it once existed? Uh, it does. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and
And can I just ask, is that true, uh, Mr. Sly, if we look at your memo, I think these are mostly facts, maybe except for the last one, but mm -hmm. is it true that the um, property uh, along the back is confirmed as open space and not developable? Yes, the rear ends of West Side. Okay. All right. And um, just with respect to your memo, has uh, is it just number five that we need confirmed? Yes, number five. Correct, correct. That, that, thank you for that clarity. They, yes, they were there, but they were not labeled. If you'd like me to label them as a supplement, I could certainly do that. It's been done privately by the prior engineer when we had the initial uh, whatever, application whatever, uh, approval. Whatever you submit to the construction office to update your permit, I'm assuming it's not going to be a separate permit, um, right. label them on there. Okay, I could do that. Um, I'm not going to swear to it, but I also brought with me a few which might become exhibits. Um, from our engineer, uh, there may be some documentation that state that limited disturbance, freshwater wetland. Geez, but I think it, we probably ought to put this one in. Yeah, let's make sure. Because that way. We didn't receive this? You have not received this. Okay. You had received it as a building department some not right. years ago. Right. Different. Not as yeah. Yeah. right, that was for the original for the patio construction. Right. 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 right, we got a, an identification and a date on that, please? Certainly. Um, it's identified as uh, it's planned for permit prepared by PSNS Engineering. Uh, let me see if I can get a date for you. Uh, I've actually got a, an approval stamp here, but uh, I'm going to use August 28th, 2018, as that date because I believe that's the official date. Okay. Um, and I would suggest that this uh, P-01 be submitted as the first uh, additional uh, exhibit. There's uh, multiple sheets. Are they all part of the same yeah, plan uh, set? Well, we yeah, could submit well, them as one exhibit. This is the exhibit. first sheet. Let me see if the second sheet might be helpful. Uh, yes, we might as well do that also. This one is, uh, this one happens to be by the engineer who did the stormwater management. So it does have some supplemental information, which might be helpful uh, to all. Uh, that was a submit that was prepared by uh, Iannacone Villa and Aldridge in the latest date looks like it's 10 13 excuse me 10 31 19 and that is sheet one of two and that's another a copy of the same so it's sheet one of two so i would suggest that maybe both of those yeah documents should exhibit say one and a two and and uh, a just, one a two right and and the second one uh identification title for that one. Oh, i'm sorry yes this is sheet one of two which is the stormwater, stormwater. recharge plan okay great that's what i was okay. asking for thank you so I'm going to make this one A1. Mm -hmm. And I'll make this second sheet exhibit A2. From the property line, okay. yes. And there's a shed on the property. There is. Uh, is it still there? It is still there. It is still there. Yes. And is it remaining? It is intended to remain. Yes. It's all off to the westerly side, uh, within uh, what is it? Uh, do I have a dimension there? In front of the driveway. Yeah, ten point seven three four five to be exact feet off the uh, property line, the westerly part of the property line. And how long has that shed been there? We bought the house with it. With the shed. I don't really know. Okay. Fair enough. Really Have you heard, ever heard any um, complaints about the shed? No. You can't, honestly, you can't see much at all of the property from the road. Uh, well, especially now with the tree. I actually visited the property today, and you can't see any neighbors from that property at all. I mean, it's very, very secluded. I've been there as well. Um, I think, Mr. Quinn, we had a memo um, from you. I think we have confirmed at least your first, I think, point with respect to the coverage. Um, mm -hmm. The 
Are there other points that you want to cover permit, with respect to permit claims to the There was an environmental commission memo too. I had in my my packet. It, it, there was. I think it it, it talked about um, coverage, right. and I think we confirmed that there is no additional coverage. Yeah, I was, I was just going to. I think I said that earlier. Yeah. But for the record, and I do have that uh, document in my possession. And for the record, I'll state it again that that there is no additional coverage based on mm -hmm. roof being covered over patio that's pre previously been approved. Any additional questions um, from the board? <coughs> what was the testimony that you gave? Because the date on some of these drawings is a little bit confusing. Some of them going back to, I guess, 2014. That you, in your obvious testimony for the uh, pre previous approval, how did we explain that we weren't putting the roof on drawings that the roof shown on? Well, the, the, the document that was originally submitted for permit uh, indicated a, um, and I don't think I have those documents here because this, this is the modified version with the roof on it, stated the, the same coverage but as a patio. So from that perspective, when it went in front of the board, there were no setback issues because we didn't have a roof to worry about at that time. This elevation we're looking at tonight is not? This A4? Uh, actually, with the, the, the answer is no. The simple answer is no because none of this roof structure that you see or that I'm de demonstrating, which is that truss-like structure I talked about with the two columns, was not on the original <coughs> building permit application because we knew that was going to create a, a variance issue. So we chose to remove it and then be in front of you as we are tonight. Yeah, because I can't figure out well, the revision schedule where it was yeah. available. Uh, let's see. Um, miscellaneous framing. So I don't know. If well, if you look, it's, it's maybe hard to find because I ran out of room here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you go to the left, you'll see two other line items, N and O. N is, uh, uh, was added finished basement. That was some basement information that we added with the building department. And O is 314.23, issued to zoning department. So that's actually, the, that's the submittal, that's a submission date of this particular so drawing. That's when the roof was added? That, uh, well, it, it was added a long time ago, but it was the first time it was submitted, let's put it that way. It was designed earlier in the project, but we, we knew we wanted to separate that so that we could proceed with construction without you know, causing the delays for, for the construction, if that answers your question. And, and at this point, there's no roof and there's no patio? Or is there no, no, well, there, there's no roof for sure. Okay. Um, if, as long as the, the board approves it, there will be at some point down right, the road. Right, so but currently, of course, this picture doesn't show us what it looks no, like. No, right but now. I, I, but I took site, a few so. today. I just didn't record them. Uh -huh. um, uh, but uh, one of your, your board members was there on the job. And it's, it's okay. pretty much as rough grade right now still. Yeah, okay. In prep, it's probably a month or so away from final grading and patio. So no patio or anything in that spot. Not at the moment. It looks similar, but probably more finished. Yeah, it's a little more finished than that, but... Yeah, yeah quite, actually quite a bit more, at least the house is. Is, is there any um, additional landscape removal, trees or otherwise, that is going to um, happen because you're putting the roof up? No, none, none whatsoever. If anything, we're going to enhance it based on some of the comments that were made in the Environmental Commission's report to add landscaping as, as the finished product. Perfect. And that will certainly, I'm sure, the, the applicant will adhere to that. I can assure as you, we'll, I will not allow the house to be finished with no plants and shrubs <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> Okay, so are we, yeah, I, we should add that. I might as well add that as a stipulation. I don't know to what extent or what threshold. It's not uh, so required. Maybe in, 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 the spirit, in, in the spirit, in the spirit of the. Good faith, best effort to in, add landscaping exactly. to the site. Okay. Yes. No committee required. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't walk around and actually step on the patio because it was very, very muddy in that yard, and I went as far as I could without sinking. But okay. It was a little drier today because I was there about three hours ago. There you go. <laughs> Any additional uh, questions from the board on this application? Just one question. On yes. something like this where you don't put walls, is it customary ever to put, I've seen dropped walls that can move in and out, they just can't be structured walls? Is that kind of the rule of thumb? 
on some structure like this? I, I've seen like re, you know um, roofs that go back and forth, right? Automatically, you're like like, can, like those big can, oh, the, uh, sliding the roof. sunsetter retractable. Not lines. sunsetter, but you know what I'm talking about or not? So about partition in that area that they're roofing well, further. No, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is it's open right now. Yeah. They can't enclose it with a wall, right? Yeah, Correct. Yeah. Oh, and they can't have a temporary like I'll call it uh, partition that moves back and forth. Can they do something? To but it's open. Yeah. They may have a different opinion. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, is your plan to keep it open? It looks, it looks, it looks great okay. open. I'm just asking if there's yeah. any rules. Would you stipulate to, to keeping it open, your patio? Not building walls? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I mean, at this point, uh, with respect, I, I don't even think I can afford to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never know. We believe in you. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I, find the yeah. enough. Okay. The one, I do have a question for the board yep. and professionals. Um, I don't know that Bernard's has an FAR requirement because I don't, at least I didn't place it on my document, so I assume it doesn't exist. So technically, if in fact Mr. Uh, uh, Cordano chose to put those, those sleeves or the, because I've, I've done them before in other houses. Um, even though they're expensive, it's an interesting way to just sort of semi-enclose the property. Uh, there's no FAR issue, so since the footprint's the footprint, we're not planning to expand it, so from that perspective. I just said that if you have a thought that you might want to, you may want to let the board know that, and the board can evaluate it, envisioning there may be screens in it, yeah. and maybe that's not a concern, or maybe it is. Uh, but usually when the board approves something that's open like this, whether it be a deck or, or something like a pergola structure that Right. Right. It's, a, it's a condition that it's going to be what it shows on the plan right. because that the open nature of it is factored into the board's decision. 100 percent. The only thing I'm going to say openly to my client is that to stipulate that you may never do it and you may be right about that. Um, and I guess if you ever sell the house down the road, that's the problem for the next person mm -hmm. to deal with. Uh, and that's OK with me. But I just thought that it happens. It happens. And I'll let the board decide on that with whatever you, you choose to place in your resolution. They would just well, have to come back. Come back yeah. Later, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always come back. That's right. Yeah, if, it, if there's an issue there. Now, yeah. You may want to request a Not at this yeah. point. Change Not our mind okay. that we want to, No easy know. breeze windows. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so the assumption is that it's going to remain open. Yes. And if you ever change your mind on that down the road, um, win the lottery, do whatever, you can come back and see us. Okay? Strictly for rain and snow it. protection. Great. That's it. Okay, good. We'll All right, thank you. Okay. Any additional questions from the board? Are there any questions from the public um, for the applicant? No. That's a no? Okay. Um, comments from the public. Any comments on the application? No. Okay. Seeing none. Anything else you want to share or do you want to turn it over to the board at this no, point? No, I'm going to turn it over to the board. I, I think our presentation is, I wouldn't say it speaks for itself, but it's a pretty straightforward application. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Any, um, anybody on the board want to kick us off? Either um, comments, deliberations, motions uh, on this application? Would you like me to summarize first, Madam Chair, or after deliberations? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. okay. All right, well, I'll just top in then. Um, so fairly simple application, relatively speaking, to some of the things that have been before the, before the board recently. Uh, one bulk variance for a uh, rear yard setback posed by the addition to the existing building via vis-a-vis -vis the roof structure over the existing patio. Uh, here in the R1 zone, a 100-foot rear yard setback is required. Applicant is proposing 89.88 feet, and that is the one variance at issue, and there are three stipulated two conditions that I heard throughout the course of the hearing. Uh, the first is identifying the conservation easement on the plans, as per both uh, Mr. Schleis and Mr. Quinn's memorandum on the topic. Um, Second condition would be adding landscaping while well, making a good faith best effort to add landscaping to satiate the environmental commission. And then I'm not entirely sure what I was hearing from the board at, as far as enclosing the patio, but I believe that was stipulated to by the applicant if the board that wishes to, open. that it will remain open. So we are going to continue with that one. So those three conditions, one variance. I'll throw it back to you, Madam Chair. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, I have a question. Do we care if it's enclosed? They're under on impervious coverage. Does that need to be a stipulation? 
Does anybody feel strongly about it? I don't. But I'm asking, I'm asking if it's necessary, if they want it to enclose it. They're under on their impervious coverage. They're, they're, I'm, they're off by 10 feet with the roof, with the rear yard setback. To me, it wouldn't matter to me if they decided to enclose it. It would depend on whether it was going to be an interior condition, a living space, or you're putting screens up or... Yeah, I, I, I'm a, I guess I'm opposed to that because you should come what you need. If you're asking for something, we should see all the drawings. We should see yeah, the whole that, that was my view as well. We like we don't know what it is yeah. exactly. So we don't know what it is. What yeah. what we do know is what was submitted. Right. Yeah. So I'd rather just rule on what is submitted. Yeah. I agree. Um, unless the applicant is saying he's had a change of heart, which we did not hear. Okay. No. Okay. We yep. asked and he said no. He said no. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, but it's I fair. Just, yeah. You know, I'm not saying like when he came back, we, it yeah. would, you know, be something that would if be. If we had more definition, yeah. then it was defined yeah. a different totally way. Totally agree. Okay. I did not think that through. I think okay. we would be okay with it, but Agreed. not. Yep. Okay. I, think, I think the condition sticks then. That's oh, okay. what I'm gathering. All right, well, I mean, I would see this as a C2 variance. I mean, if you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I would say it meets the positive criteria. Can you just move your mic closer? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I would say that it meets the, the positive criteria that the, uh, the purposes of the MULA would be advanced, and it meets the negative criteria that the requested relief can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. I, I Honestly, nobody can see this backyard unless you're on that particular property. Um, so I would make a motion to approve, it as, approve this as drafted with the um, stipulations as specified. I'll second. Yeah, and, and maybe I, I would also add just as, a, as a, an additional point that the land behind it is town land and, and not developable. So, you know, there's, we, we have, uh, I think, more leeway with respect to the back. It doesn't seem to be negatively impacting any, uh, any of the neighbors. And even the one neighbor that's close is 450 feet away, I think. I'll second that, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Ms. Kiefer, I think we have a motion and a second? Yes, we, we do. We do, indeed. Uh, Ms. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Cambria. Yes. Mr. Kraus. Yes. Mr. Pavlovsky. Yes. Ms. Pakhtar. Yes. Chairwoman Janiers. Yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. The exhibits go to me. Down there. That way. It's down the line. Thank you for remembering. Well, have a good night. Good. This too. one is to go down. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Almost done. Can we carry mm -hmm. these up? Okay, next on the agenda uh, is 5D, which is Stowe and Clark, ZB23010. Well, Madam Chair, while the applicant and uh, his team, or their team, I'm sorry, is approaching, I will just mention for the record, uh, notice of this hearing was uh, properly effectuated. Uh, both the content and the timeliness I deem to be sufficient. It was published in the Curry Burnersville News on uh, June 1st, 2023, and sent by certified mail on June 2nd, 2023. Both well in advance of 10 days of today, well in advance, well more than 10 days in advance of tonight's hearing. I'm stumbling over my words here. It's been a long day. So the board has jurisdiction here in this matter. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Zelli. Good evening. We've missed you the last couple of weeks. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> I could take on signature, but. <laughs> <laughs> you still get involved. It's not over. Let's see. We had the first seven meetings of your 39 meeting Moscow. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, board professionals, Frederick Zelli Millington on behalf of the applicants, Carolyn Clark and Jody Stowe. This is regarding 11 Culberson Road, tax block 1902, lot eight. It's in your R6 residential zone. The applicants wish to construct a detached front load two bay garage with a second level recreation slash golf room at the end of the existing driveway uh, on the right or east side of the property. They will soon have four licensed drivers in the family. That would be the two of them and uh, two younger people who are about to start driving. Uh, they also have a collector vehicle. They wish to be able to garage all of the vehicles uh, for protection from the elements and as well as from theft, uh, given the recent uh, residential auto theft increase in New Jersey in particular, but nationwide. A project requires bulk variances for just two, uh, one for impervious coverage 
uh, of 21.58, where 18 is permitted. Uh, we are currently slightly over uh, due to an as-built situation for an after-the-fact uh, construction of some gravel areas. Uh, the second bulk variance is excessive height of an accessory building. Uh, 20 feet is permitted. We're proposing 29.92. Uh, and I'll allow the applicant to explain why it's important for that second story to have a little bit of height to it. Uh, we just have two witnesses this evening, uh, Jody Stone, one of the applicants, and Kathy Muller, our engineer. Okay. Um, Ready for me, Mr. Chairman? for me? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Then I'd ask Ms. Stowe and Ms. Muller to stand up and be sworn in. And I would ask the same of our board professionals, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. To all of you, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Jody, you and I are going to switch places. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Ms. Joe, just for the record, where do you presently reside? 11 Culberson Road. And you reside there with your co applicant, Carolyn? That's correct. Okay. And when did you purchase the property, approximately? Uh, 2015. Okay. And you have children? Uh, yes, we have two teenagers. Okay. And there's some rumor that they're getting near driving age? Uh, they're on the road already. They're so on the road yes. already. Okay. Be careful, so we're better off being inside <laughs> yes. this building. <laughs> uh, Ms. Muller's gonna testify as to the technical details of the application, but just in your own words, could you give us a basic understanding of what you're proposing? Uh, it's a two-car detached garage uh, that would have a second floor, like as a rec room and kind of golf simulated area. And when you say a golf room, for those of us who might not be golfers, what is that actually going to be? What are you envisioning up there? Um, it's a space where you can put a, it's like a movie screen. Um, it's a golf simulator, so it's kind of like a screen like that. And there's a projector and you can practice Top golf? And, I'm sorry, you can Top practice. Golf? Golf. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Okay. So yeah, you kind of just kind of swing in there, and mm -hmm. but you need the height to be able to swing the golf club, and cool. you know, for tall people, I'm not that tall, but we do know tall people, so. <laughs> and just to be clear, you're not looking to have an apartment up there or living space other than what you're describing, is that right? No, no more guests. Okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. And specifically, I mean, I've talked about in the opening, but what, why are you doing this? Why do we need two more bays uh, in garage space? Um, for, for us, there's a, there's a few reasons. One is we just feel like we're at uh, the way our garage is situated now and the capacity of like the four cars that are currently there and, and the fifth that we keep someplace else now. Um, it's, it's like a parking lot. We're always coming in and out and all around and I'm, I'm sure it's the same for everybody. Um, all the bays are not empty. You know, the first bays there's a refrigerator. There's like all that stuff. It's a two-car garage now. No, there's a three. It's, it's a three. three. It's a three okay. bay. Um, so we're loaded with kind of all the normal stuff. We don't have a shed in the backyard, so we've got the snow blowers in there, and you know everything's pushed back. I have a long car. I can't. I can barely get mine in. So, although it's a three bay, we usually utilize one. Most the other two are kind of, one's always full with something, and the second one is like, all right, let's try and move this stuff and put it someplace else. So um, so th there's that element. Um, the other part, too, I would say, is our driveway is kind of one, one car width kind of coming in. So when you kind of get to the end, you always have to, like I said, it's that coming in and out all the time, and now that my kids are driving, you know, their friends are coming around, and it's, it's, it's not good. Culberson's is where we are, our end. It's not really wide enough for, for it's very narrow for two cars, so kids parking on the street as well, um, or if we have to put cars on the street, um, it's not very convenient because you can barely kind of get around them, especially kind of the way the, 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 the street is laid out. We have zero family in New Jersey. It's everybody's up from New England, so um, we always have a lot of family visiting, and again, we're just like a parking lot, which, you know, doesn't look great all the time. You know, we've got all these cars in there all the time, so I would say that's part of it too. And then sometimes, you know, in, uh, in the winter, our third bay gets blocked because of the way the snow is 
pushed up. It kind of just ends, the driveway just ends right at the end of the bay. And so if we don't get out there in the morning and tell them don't put it there, especially with the slush, and then all of a sudden it freezes, we can't even use that bay all winter sometimes. So there's just like a, a series of kind of reasons why we like to have the extra bays. And you're proposing to have some extra parking space between the front of the garage and what's now the end of the driveway, right? Correct, and, and, and we, we talked about it a lot. We talked about it with um, the architect, and we talked about just kind of the reasons we know it's, it's easier here to kind of just have it pushed closer to the house and not have that in front. Um, we feel that if it is pushed right to the edge of where the house is, it, it doesn't really, it solves being able to put two cars there, but it doesn't solve that ability of like moving around the cars like we need to, so we feel that I'm not sure if it doesn't really help our situation for how we want to try and solve it. So because of that, we think that we would want it to be back or need it to be back further in order to, again, get cars out of the way so we can get the other cars out of the bays. Otherwise, we're just still moving cars around because nobody can get in and out without blocking. Uh, it would be better for snow removal as well if we can get it and push it all to the right side. Yeah. And we feel like, you know, there's room in the back. I mean, we don't have any neighbors right behind us. We have a lot of trees on both sides, so it is somewhat private. I mean, you can see it from the front of the house. That's where you would see it. And, you know, with the architect, we try to put something that was you know, pleasant and pleasable and not, you know, that looked too crazy out of, out of sync with the neighborhood. Um, that, especially since our house, when you look at it from the front, it looks like it doesn't have a garage right on the right side, so that's not there. So it kind of looked like the one the garage in some aspect. I just wanted to comment on the, the garage set back 20 feet from the end of the house, because I know Dave had a comment in there too, and you're requesting impervious cover variance, but there is another reason. I mean, I myself have almost done this at my house and thought about it, and if the garage is brought forward, you've got conflicting movements where a vehicle from each bay, unbeknownst, can literally, can, they're, they're fighting for the same apron. So this kind of provides them with another apron, an area to back out so they won't be conflicting. So there are other kind of planning reasons, logistical reasons, to push that back where it might be advantageous to put it back. That's all. Can I ask you a question? How, how do you, having these cars stacked the way they're stacked in these pictures, how do you get out? Do you back every car out to the main road? When you're leaving, or do you pull in, turn around? Is you it back out? You back every car out, and so adding the additional, you'd still be backing out, or do you then have the ability to move and turn the car so you're heading straight out? I mean, I would hate the back out of that driveway, any driveway, let alone a longer driveway. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that going to correct that situation so you don't what? have to back out or not? Well, backing out's not a problem. Yeah, okay. honestly, we back. I oh, it's going to be She's a bad driver. <laughs> I'm, horrible. I'm horrible. At that. He's a no, terrible driver. I mean, you okay. can do a, you know, you can do a K turn in. Okay, no, I'm just wondering. I know um, but only if it's empty. I know we've yeah. talked at yeah. other <laughs> other right. driveways. So you have a small car, like extra, a Jeep. You know what I mean? Like some. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be empty. Okay. Correct. So we could we could turn so and then go forward. No issue backing cars out or anything. You don't have that issue. Okay. Just personally, my issue then. I've got a camera now. That makes all the difference it in does. the world. It does. <laughs> it does. Uh -huh. Speaking of the photographs, let's uh, let's go through those. When was it, how many drivers are there in the house right now? Four. So for the board's uh, edification, for the record, all of these photographs were taken by myself shortly before the filing of the application. So Ms. Stowe, what I'll ask you to do uh, is just. And we'll start with the photos, the first set, which is the photos of your actual property. Okay. Uh, if you would, just uh, you know, quickly go through each one and tell the board what's uh, shown in the picture and also confirm that it portrays it accurately as it appears on site. Uh, yes, that's our house. Um, and you can see how the, dr the driveway is. Um, the garage would obviously be set back on the right-hand side. Um, and like I said, I think we had the uh, architect draw it so that you know, it looks like it's the only garage to the house because the other three you can't you, you can't really see unless you're really coming down narrow because we have trees down the right side. If you take the second picture, you can see the uh, the trees on the right side or I guess the evergreens. That will you know stay there. We don't have to remove any of that. Um, the 
the third picture is the same thing as you kind of come in. And that's what the three kind of, yep. This is the fourth picture. It's the close up so you can see where that black fence is right there. That's, you know, three feet in front of that is where um, the driveway ends. So you can see it's kind of tight kind of coming in. You can only get in the garage if you take a big right wide turn and then go in straight. And just focusing on that picture for a second, it's showing us, is it not, where the Jeep is, how you're blocking, with current parking, you're blocking part of your bay. Yeah, absolutely. You can't get out. Yeah, once somebody comes in, like I said, you can't get out. You've got to keep moving everybody all around. So sorry for the pickup truck there? The black one? <laughs> That's a, there's a reason that appears in every single set of shots. <laughs> Used to be blue. It's a different yeah. one. <laughs> going these are as you can see they're all pretty much the same area um, the fence that's on the right that you can see that goes down the, the entire property line um, that would remain so the what we're looking at with those within that space but just pushed back and you can see on the right hand side the trees are very tall uh, there's just one neighbor over there that's Spencer I mean, we're friendly with all our neighbors and everybody's very um, supportive of each other in terms of home improvements whether it's on Spencer, Allwood, and like what we call our block, that's kind of our, our core central area. Jody, I'm gonna ask you, sure. and I'm not sure if you're at this shot or not, is this where you are? Yes. Okay, so we can get everyone on this photo. Yeah. And you can see the fence, and that's what I'm going to focus on, on the right. Um, Ms. Muller will go over this in detail, but that fence is off of the line by about 15 feet because of the conservation easement that's along the or the easement that's along the line. Is that correct? Uh, no, we just didn't want to go all the way in. We own the land. To let, the okay, let, the let me refit. I shouldn't have said because. Oh, oh, oh. In fact, though, <laughs> it's 15 feet off of the line. It's correct, not right yeah. on the line. Right. Okay. And that's approximately where the side of the garage is going to be as well. Yeah, it'll be okay. in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So just to give a visual, if you're trying to picture where the garage is going to be for the photographs, you can see side of the garage could be approximately where that fence is. And is, are those trees then going to be removed as part of this project or? Uh, which trees? Behind the fence. There's just those, there's just little, we have uh, that we planted two years ago, three fruit trees uh -huh. that are only like six feet. On the okay. next picture maybe, these? That one, those right there. Oh, you go, if you could flip to the next page. Uh -huh. um, those would have to be removed, but we can put them anywhere else on the property. I mean, since we moved in, we counted today, we've planted in the back, I don't know if you can see them all, there's a lot of trees to the left, over 15 evergreens and fig trees in the back, but we can certainly, but yes, to answer your question, yes, those okay. three would have to be removed. But is that something you'd be willing to stipulate to, to uh, just oh, relocating them? Oh, yes, okay, absolutely, great. we can move them Thank anywhere. You. We've got, you can see there's a lot of space back there, we can put them. But none of the other larger trees like, nope. I can't point to it, but the big one we see here, not it might be trimmed, them. but it's not going to, like, two stories not going to impact that at all, and it won't be, okay. What are your neighbors in that 67? How, how are they feeling about this eruption of this structure? Which ones? I don't know who they are, but not so, not so. Is that Spencer, or which one is that? Is that yeah. Those three? Uh, honestly, I didn't ask them. <laughs> So I didn't realize I was supposed to. We kind of been. Which one? They're noted. Yeah, I would yeah, assume they're noted. They would have noted. just absolutely. Right. Yeah. Correct. So. Uh, Culberson. Okay, so the, the corner. corner lot. All right, yeah, that's okay. George and Sophia. So um, those two, the answer is I haven't spoken to because I haven't seen them. They do get the notices. But they didn't come to you <coughs> with any comments? No. Okay. I, like I said, we, we know all our neighbors really well. I think one neighbor on the other side was like, you know, why haven't you started yet? I'm like, well, we haven't even had the variance meeting yet, you know, but. Um, <laughs> we appreciate your waiting. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so I don't know if they thought like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's happening or not, but obviously okay. I think we know them well enough if there was a problem, they would come and, and say something to us. Um, okay. I don't think they would be. And Joe, just for the record, yeah. both of those houses face Spencer Road, so your house is in their backyard, essentially. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, especially Lot 6, they can barely see our house because of those tall trees. 
and then for lot seven, um, they would they can see it just on this angle. They have to be kind of on this angle to see it because again they have tall trees. And they have some kind of a lot seven has some kind of an outbuild. Is that a shed or something like that or pool? They have a pool and then they have a shed behind their pool uh, uh, when start property. So that's between their house and you closer to the line. You would just take us through the rest of those. You can go a little more quickly with those since they're really just showing the rest of the property. So if you go, this is the backyard area. Uh, this is from the very corner of our backyard, looking to where the garage would be over here. How about um, how about that shed? That is a, a wood shed. So it's just it just holds wood. Are you moving it? I uh, don't think, I thought you were. Yes, we're moving it. Okay. <laughs> I think so, right to the back. Yeah. It's okay. just for storage of firewood. It's not a storage shed for That is correct. Yeah. Uh, then the next page is the, this one here. That's the end of the, the backyard. And again, we have uh, 25 feet that we own beyond this fence. And then there's the town easement. We just didn't want to put the fence way back there. This is just the other angle from the backyard of the house. And that would be where the garage would be in this spot. So that picture, the garage would be back there. Mm -hmm. And again, on that, on that photo that you just showed, this one, it's just these three smaller trees that would be removed and you've agreed to replace those. Correct. That photograph that you have in front of you, which is this one, showing some of those gravel areas that causes currently to be slightly over and impervious, is that right? Correct. The gravel areas. Yes. And in the back of the house on one of these photos, is that like a trash enclosure? What's in the, what's in the back? Um, this here? Hot tub? Mm -hmm. yeah. no. Oh, no, that's uh, just air conditioning units behind oh, there. So okay, so it's fence. just like a fence. It's just a... Yeah, it doesn't go all the way around. Gotcha. It's sort of like a, just so you don't see the units. It's just like a barrier to block. Yeah, it's just From like visual. a... It's, a visual. it's just like okay. a visual, so you don't see them. Okay. Yeah. Screen. Thank you. And the other set of photographs I'm going to ask you to focus on. Uh, Mr. Zilli, real quick before we move on. Sure. I think I know the answer to this question. Did you take these photographs? Yeah, I actually stated that. I took all of them. Okay, and uh, <laughs> what, what, approximately when did you take them? Uh, just before the application was filed. Okay, and I think your uh, applicant has already testified to this through, you know, through context, context clues, but they accurately portray the property as it currently exists? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Just got to do housekeeping. And I'd ask you the same round of questions for the second set of well, uh, we, we can jump right to that. Uh, yeah. It's the same answers for, I'll, I'll let her testify as to whether it's accurately portrays, but they right. were taken at the same time. Okay, great. First and obviously the point of these is to show uh, similar structures within the same neighborhood. Uh, and Jody, if you would, just go through each sure. one. Sure, first one's on 96 Culberson. Uh, so that's obviously on the same street. And you can see the structure with the two garage and the uh, building on top. I do not know how much land coverage. Uh, the next one is uh, 68 South Allward. That's right around the corner. This was just uh, all redone. You can see the, a similar, just showing the height of the uh, building on top of the garages. And that's actually a three bay garage. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, next one's 46 South Allward. This one was kind of uh, uh, almost like a little inspiration for us in terms of look wise. Um, and that's just right around the corner as well on our block. Uh, there's another one. The next one's on uh, South Allward. It's kind of hidden, but it's 14 South Allward. And again, at least, at least three bays on that one. Yeah. And the next one's on Spencer, 53 Spencer. And your property's just off the corner of Spencer and Culbertson. Correct, right? yeah. We Lots back seven up to and Spencer. six 
based on Spencer. Correct. And then the last one was on the, what's on West Oak, which is the, the full circle, where they're just constructing that now. And that's near the intersection of Allward and uh, West Oak, right? Correct. Yeah, it's right on the corner. I'm just going to show you if I can find it. I'm just going to hand you the architectural plans that have been submitted to the board. There's nothing different. I just want you to confirm for the record that the uh, illustrations in these plans accurately portray what you're proposing with regard to the garage. more questions uh, would you stipulate as a condition of approval uh, that there would be no use of the garage as a separate dwelling unit and that it would not be rented out to third parties yes we would stipulate to that okay. and that the space would be used by your family and guests only again not by third parties for any kind of compensation correct yes okay. I have nothing further for Ms. Stowe at the moment dry bar and a fridge, but there's no um, sink or bathroom or anything like that on the plans, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah, I no plumbing. saw that. I just, okay. And the, the windows on the second floor, do they look towards the pool of the house? I don't know the lot, lots here. Would, would they impact that at all? Have you thought of that? Um, I mean, looking out that, those windows. On that side, itself. it would be on the second floor. I have to look on the, the drawing. <coughs> I think they're just narrow on that side. Oh, yeah. There are smaller windows? Oh, I see on his 14 foot window. Right side. Right 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 there's these little windows? Yeah. Would there be so window covering on it, or are they wide? I mean, going to be open windows, do you think? Um, I know they're going to be smaller windows, so I would think there would be co some covering on it because if we have a screen, you may watch movies up there, you know what right. I mean? So it would want a darkening right. as well. I'm, I'm so. just thinking of the, the height of that hearing that someone's backyard that has a pool possibly versus right. your current house that's pretty far away and probably doesn't have windows looking in that direction. We're mm -hmm. always concerned about neighbors and you know, stuff right. like that. No, so. I know. I understand. Um, so the garage will be behind where the pool is. Understood. They'd be looking at an angle to get there. It's a little far yeah. back, so you'd be in the other the neighbors. Looking at the trees. Versus the, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and is the intention to have two cars parked in that parking? I'm sorry. Yes. Basement garage, or the first floor garage. Yes. Part? Definitely. Okay. And are the and, and I just know that I have a problem parking my cars in my current mm -hmm. garage because of the size of the doors. Are they? I don't know if there's a standard door or a larger door because of the size of cars you might have to fit in the garage. Is that? We, we I think. I don't know what it's showing there. eight foot doors, which. Is standard. standard, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, I know I can't fit my cars comfortably yeah. with the, and they're not big cars even with the, um, um, without folding them Sometimes in, they're squeezing it. Okay. Is it a nine foot? Yeah, nine foot wide. A nine foot wide by eight. Foot oh, wide. I take it back. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So a nine is. Each bay is an eight feet wide. Nine foot's big. Yeah. Eight is. I think I have an eight foot. So nine is okay. So what, is, for the what is the purpose of the overhead door at the back by the storage area to be able to drive the car all the way through into the backyard? It's for lawn equipment and so right. forth. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Jody? Right. Would you say the primary reason for your structure is the additional garage space or is it for the additional room on the second floor? Primarily it's the garage space. Primarily it's the garage space. But that would be five cars. You think you think you need five cars? Well, because we know I know we don't use one of the bays. Yeah. Because of the stuff and the second one's always kind of in flux. So isn't that stuff gonna get moved into the back of the new garage? Some of it will be, but not, I mean, not all of it. We still have refrigerators and storage and food and 
a freezer there, you know, kind of stuff like that. So, um, but in any but event, you do have five car, vehicles. But yes, we do have five. So we feel we need five. I know when we were looking at the pictures, you mentioned the types of trees, but the way it looks to me, where the garage would be situated, mm -hmm. it would be adjacent to trees um, that are deciduous, right? The, the leaves would fall in the fall. So in the fall and the winter, will your neighbors be able to see the structure? Some or do you have like enough? It's um, a combination. Like I'm looking look at those pictures again. Some are evergreens, but yes, yeah, some are, have leaves on them that will fall off. Right. It's the same way, I guess, you know, the way I can see their house, I would think at some point they could see something of the structure, sure. Again, I, I visited the site today. And most I did of, too. Yeah, most of the trees on the property line seem to be evergreen in my memory. Well, the, I was looking at the pictures and it's, it's not clear what's down in, in that back part. I didn't walk the property, I, I drove the neighborhood. I didn't walk the property, but as I'm looking at the pictures, the front part of town. where the structure is going to be, it doesn't look like there are evergreens there, but I can't tell. I think mm -hmm. there were. I, I, I did it's walk back there, but I don't, you know, I didn't take pictures, so I don't remember myself. It's a combination, I would say. It's not one but or I the other. I thought it was pretty well screened. It certainly is in the front here. There are a lot of evergreens in the front, but I don't know about what's Sorry. back there in the backyard. As I'm looking at the pictures, it looks like it's completely screened, but if mm -hmm. in the winter and the fall, um, your neighbors can see it, that it's a little bit different. Yeah, this, this photo shows a lot of precipia kind of at the edge. It's pretty good. Yeah, this, this one I think is the one you want to look at. Yeah, the building, you see the woodshed here? On this photo with the garden, you're looking over the garden. The proposed garage structure is probably five feet in closer to the house than the existing shed. So that gives you an idea of where it ends, looking at that photo. Oh, wow. Can you say that again, Mr. Quinn? You think it's five feet closer? It's yeah, in other words, if you look on the if you look on their drawing, uh, you'll see the proposed two story garage. You can see the shed at, in its current location where it's being relocated. That's probably, I'm guessing, five to seven feet behind the rear wall of the proposed garage structure. So that helps me locate okay. that garage on this photo relative right. to the side yard. Yeah. Right, so those are evergreens there. Doesn't look like it. Ms. Dell, let me ask you this. If the board were inclined as a condition of approval to require planting of evergreens or something that would provide an even thicker buffer, would you have any objection to that? Um, I don't. You it can't plant it. Actually, the only thing, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you, you could. I mean, I think, what did you say, the, the drainage easement uh, uh, next to the garage, between the garage and the property line precludes you can't, you can't planting. Plant yeah. yeah, about 20, it, it extends about 20, 20 feet back along the side of the buffer. So about 25 feet of the building is shattered by the buffer and they can't really plant in there. So you said something in your report about the excavation disturbing the drainage easement. Oh, just that there, the building is located like one and a half feet from that line. So the grading is gonna carry dirt into the yeah. easement. So right. the owner of the easement, the township yep. just has to be made aware of it. Not that they can't do it, but that any changes in grading to any kind of easement, the owner of the easement has to be made aware of it to make sure there's no issues. I don't anticipate any there. But. Is there something that, so they should be able to see anything of this structure at all? I mean, I, I, mean, I know we're in a neighborhood, so it's kind of hard not to see everybody's house at some point in the winter. Um, have they, have they the height there. Evergreens don't lose their leaves like trees do. That's why I was asking about the adjacent neighbors that we had spoken to, too. Because mm -hmm. leaves aren't going to stay on there all year. Are, are your neighbors aware how close this is going to be? That they, they will see it. Did you, did you speak to them? They were noticed. Everybody they were noticed. Yeah, I 
I mean, similar, like to, I the said, I, I didn't know similar to the spoken, opposite but. side of the house, you know, is what uh -huh. would be preferable, I guess, evergreen for something like that. Right. 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 So I actually <laughs> like that it's set back. Because when I looked at the house, to put it right next to it, well, I mean, obviously you couldn't because you would block your garage, but there were other, I saw other examples while I was driving of mm -hmm. the garage, the detached garage next to the house. And to me, it's it's too much of a wall in the front of the property. So I actually like that it's set back. Mm -hmm. I'm just mindful of the height right. and whether or not when you're, occupying the second level if there's going to be and you're so close to the property line mm -hmm. is that you know are you, are you looking into their into the neighbor's lot kind of thing um, i mean technically you probably could from your house anyway i'll ask ms yes. muller to address yeah, the distance good. from those houses to us though it is substantial you know it's not uh especially since it's the backyards you that know so this it's not like we have a, a neighbor that's facing culberson and is right next to us, you know, with a, with a relatively you're small side right You've got the, the entire back. Line. You're sorry. You're at the property line of the other two lots, so where they join. We are at their rear where there's lines. There's not a lot of activity or buildings or anything going on right. where the structure would be. Are, th are there exterior lights on the building anywhere? Uh, no, there was, it was all going to just be in the driveway, but you know, maybe. facing down. So yeah. And the upstairs has, of course, the windows we referred to, so some right. light, if they were turned on, it. would go right. that and way we're towards their backyard. Up there all the time. You know, oh, I no. Mean, it's a yeah, it could be you, could be the next person that lives in the house. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. know. Um, yeah. Right. So. Um, but yeah, the setback would just, would be, just be, uh, be the one house. So, as a condition, that we would have no exterior lights besides down facing in the front where the bays are. I'll but by the bays and yeah. whatever man door. We have a man door on the one side. Yeah, so at, at the doors, the bays and the man doors. Right. So I have a question about the lock coverage aspect. So currently you're over, even though you were under when you got your permits for the, for the house. What elements put you over on lock coverage since the house yeah. was over? We didn't realize you were over because when we did the outdoor kitchen, we got all the permits, everything we needed, and we did the gravel at that same time. Right. And the town came out and looked at everything. So we, we didn't even realize that we were over. So I don't know when we were working, there was a bunch of people, I'll be honest, there was like, and, I, and again, I don't know what the position was who we were dealing with, but it turned over a couple times. But somehow within that, they were, somebody said gravel doesn't count as coverage. But everything went through the town. So I, uh, I don't know what to tell you. We got a, everything has a, even the woodshed has a permit. Everything got a permit. So I don't know how that happened, honestly. So when they told me that, I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. We, you know, so I don't know the answer to that. Okay. And it, that it does seem that those gravel areas are what are throwing us over. Yeah, yeah. and those gravel them. areas are um, planned to stay. They are. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like you have the gravel walkway that's going to stay, and then you have your outdoor covered kitchen, hot tub, and fire pit, right, all tipping our scales. And, and I agree with Ms. Bauman. I, um, you know, there's always a massing issue when you have something like this for sure. Um, so I am also a fan of pushing it back. Having said that, um, that costs us as well, right? That's another 20 feet. And, and how did we solve for 20 feet? Did, did we hear like that was an appropriate amount for cars, you know, they moving around? Is that how we? Car in front of the garage. Oh, so amount of a car. car up and then let the, other bays come out. the ordinance requires 10 feet between the buildings, so they could really only move it 10 feet forward, or deal with another variance. Gotcha. So it's you know 10 by 20. It's about 250 square feet yep. that it theoretically could be moved forward to reduce the coverage without creating another problem. Yeah, but then it creates another problem. Okay. And, and there's no dry, uh, walkway from the side left door to anywhere? I guess, where does that go? Is it left? So you're looking straight at the house. It's on the left side. And is that door? Looking at the garage, you mean? You're talking yeah, about a man door in the garage. The house in the front of the garage. It's on the left side is the door? That's that side door? That side door? Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
Which I'll, I'll ask Ms. Muller to address that. Okay. She'll, okay, no, that's fine. That's I just wondered if there's a walkway that, plan right. to right. go between that door and somewhere in the yeah, property. Sure. No, so. No, no, I, I don't. People put <laughs> stuff in and, you know, you never know. So okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. All right, more questions for Ms. Stowe? Nope. Are we okay with the height of this structure? I think we're going to. I assume we're going to hear more about that. I, the calculation seems correct to me, yeah. how they calculated it. Yeah. Um, so just to confirm that the height of the structure, we're at 21.92? That's correct. Yeah. There, there is one comment in the professional's yeah. reports that there, it's mislabeled at one spot. We did confirm with the architect, and, and we stipulate that it should be 21.92, not the higher number. Okay, great. Just, just confirm it. Yeah. That would be accurate. And Jody, just to, to address that a little more. Uh, you've indicated the reason you have the height where it is is because you do actively intend to use this for the golf practice and you need that height in order for the swings. Is that accurate? That's correct. I mean, we worked with the architect to bring it down. It was actually higher. We kept coming down, coming down as low as we can. And we, you know, ask people, we try to look at, you know, what's the, the what's allowed to do it. So that was the lowest we could do for somebody of like an average, a man of the high, average height. We could like swing a club or something. Yeah, the upstairs is fine. I guess the comment that I have is this is you don't really need nine foot four inches to park a car in in the height in the first level. That's why we're asking the question relative to a car that's nine foot four inches tall. It don't exist. That's why. Is it nine foot four to the ceiling, or is that yes. the is that the, the uh, size of the garage door? What's yes. the no, ceiling it seems to be. What's the size of the garage door? Uh, eight, eight by nine, eight nine, nine wide, eight high. Eight high. Yeah. My garage is seven foot six inches tall to the ceiling inside. So that's nine foot four and a half to the bottom of the. Do you have an Do you have an overhead door though, or is it a different type I of door? Have a four section. And it clears? It's fine. Okay. And a garage door opener, and it fits. I mean, if we're talking about height, I mean, I understand the height, swing height. I get all that. That's all fine. Yep. But yeah, that's on top of the nine and a half down below. And the beams that are shown to be here. So that's yeah, I, I agree. That's a very high ceiling height for a garage. Yeah, you don't need nine foot. Do you know why it was structured uh, at nine and a half feet for the first floor of the garage? I do not. Okay. I, I honestly don't know what a standard garage height was, so I don't know what okay. to do with stairs to go up, but I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I'm a little unclear. Where are we seeing a nine foot? I'm seeing eight foot one. It's on, it's on the elevation. No, that's still to be correct. Right? Oh, but it's just foot four. Yeah, but it's just the correct. The second page. Okay. Yeah. That's where I was looking. Second page. All right. If, if I could throw something out there that I think might potentially address the concerns that I'm hearing from the board. Um, so we've established there's windows on the side of the proposed garage that's going to face that property to the, I'm saying to the right facing your house. Um, would you be willing to remove those windows on the side as a means to you know, kind of alleviate the privacy and light spillage concerns? I'm sure, entirely sure that would be okay. Would that be something you guys would be willing to stipulate to if the board yeah, felt I that mean, necessary? I don't, I don't see why it's the right side elevation. Yeah. 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 Not to take away from the mass right. and the structure. Sure. You could design them like low-light windows. Yeah. And ask your yeah. architect about that. I think yeah. this is right, though. It's going to look massive. The wall without any kind of windows yeah. is going to look massive. I'm just trying to throw something out there. No, I think it's a good idea, but I think, it, I think it might take away from the aesthetic, the aesthetic of it. How high is the existing garage? What's the height of the existing garage? The, the one it's part of the house. It's, there is no. The house has different 
elevation, do we know how, just as a point of reference, like is it gonna be higher than that? Is it be, I'm just trying to envision. I think it's high. I think there's our garage. It's high. The, the it's current, do we, do have, we don't have a measurement of the current garage? Unfortunately, I don't think we have anything that would show that. Oh, I see you're saying so that they match. I was just trying to trying to vision that could be. how I much think higher or lower nine. it would be than that. Group. I, that I do think accessible. they're higher than, they have a very high garage on the inside. So I've just for perspective, in this picture here, you can see the garage. So but I wonder if it's less than the side door. But I wonder if it's for the truck. So they can't be. My husband can't fit this. Hang on. Hang on, guys. We can't, I can't hear everybody. Um, Mr. Pavlovsky, what were you saying? The fourth picture shows a perspective of the height of the garage doors in relationship to the covered side door. And the garage yeah. doors are lower than that. So when I look at your architect's drawings here, you can see, as, again as a reference, the height of your covered side door is much lower, maybe a foot and a half, I'm guessing, who knows. But anyway, it's much lower than your proposed height of your new garage. And I think you're garage doors on the existing house are probably seven foot go up. My educated guess. So. I mean, I have was the design was it was it designed to fit your truck? Go ahead. Was it designed specifically to fit the truck? Uh, no, it was desi designed to fit kind of a standard car. But we do have a Jeep that's higher. I have a, uh, an SUV that's high, but they're already the same height, I would think. But, I'm sorry, it would be like, you know, mine is like this truck too, so it would be high like that, but I don't know. Is the mic working? I, I know there was talk about the height. I, I honestly, I'm sorry, I, I just don't remember why we had it at that particular height versus another. Um, okay, but I haven't heard any reasons that you needed that height on, on the lower level. Did I? Unless I missed it. I don't know. I don't no, know okay. if it was designed for a reason, and I just don't remember it okay, because we that's just fine. went with it like, okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's so. fine. Any additional questions for Mr. Well, the, well, I can ask the, uh, is that the architect? Yeah, the, we're gonna still hear engineer. from the architect. Yeah. Okay. I think it's our engineer. Oh, engineer, I'm sorry, yes, okay. Is it an engineer type question? Because otherwise just, it might be better for her. Just, if we, do we know is, the, is this garage higher or shorter than the existing? I don't think we know. Are you talking about the, the bays themselves to the interior ceilings? No, or? The, the roof. Okay. Okay. We'll wait. Well, okay. If the I, board. I, the reason I'm asking, the, the, I understand the conversation about the garage doors and the height of the first floor and, and stuff. The variance is for 21.9 feet high. It's a foot and a half higher. And I'm just trying to visualize compared to the house, is it a foot and a half, what that foot and a half does? Does that make it shorter or taller than the house? Um, it's not gonna be the be all end all, but I'm just trying to envision, envision that. Is the, is the Ms. Muller's gonna try to do some calculations and figure line, that yeah, out. The roof line at the first floor the same as the roof line that looks like a oh, little overhead garage. Yeah, it doesn't match. Right. Is that maybe the, the roof to the roof. Just right, right, right. Did he do that like just for symmetry yeah. or like yeah. to get for the reason? Yeah. I think it was a reason. Yeah. 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 It is higher than that. So that's about two feet up. I think it's the awning. Oh, yeah. See, that, that's the awning to the doorway. And then the it appears that way. It appears. Right. That's a nice thing. You might have been matching the apron. Like to see the height of the right. Like the, the shed roof over the garage entrance right, right, to right, the, right. That, that the new one. And you know, um, if you think about an eight-foot garage door, you probably need at least like a like a nine and a half or a twelve-inch beam over top of it. And then you got your, your framing above that. So really, I'm not sure that. I guess the relative math is if the existing garages, there are three of them. Right. There's a double door and a single door, and in my opinion, they're seven foot high openings, and yes, 
you need a clearance above the opening, there is a regular radius track that yeah. you need a you certain need amount. Door, or there's a, the the I know, we're not garage door experts, but there's also low headroom too, but the point is, is all that's adding up. Right. That's the point, right. I'm not sure, I'm not so sure I'm bo that bothered by two feet being, like not even two feet being open. You know, okay. Let me, if I, if I can, Go let's ahead. let Ms. Muller testify and hopefully she'll be able to address yeah, that would those be questions. Helpful, yeah, that's I think. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the public for Ms. Stowe? If you can hang on one second for us here, okay? Thank you. In that case, we call Kathy Muller to the sure. Hang on one sec. We have yeah. one question. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't see that. Go ahead. Yep. Name Come up to the microphone, room. please. Todd Ostein, 172 Riverside Drive. Thank you. Not, not that I'm a little jealous since I have just a one-car garage. Hmm. Um, I just had some questions. Um, when did this um, application come? When did you do this application? When was it filed? Yeah, when was it filed? For May, April twentieth. April twentieth. Uh, only. I'm on the environmental commission. I'm not speaking as an environmental commission. S sir, I'm on here. We didn't see it. I can swear you in if you wanted to make some comments. No, 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 we're no, we're no, we're, we're doing a question. Questions. I do have questions. Not it's not a comment. So. All right, just but I did. Can I weigh in on this? See the applications and then I didn't. So. I, Madam my Chair. May be a little long. Okay. That's all. Okay. Um, the property, is, is there any slopes on the property? That's a better question for Ms. Muller after she testifies. When it rains, how does the water flow off your property? Again, better question for Ms. Muller. Okay. I just, wa I just want you to be able to have answers. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, if I live okay. in the house and it rains, I think I would know which way the water Okay, Ms. Stowe, do you, do you have an answer for her? Okay. Uh, can you speak into the microphone, please? You can, thank you. I, I know in the property when we built the house, it's like holding tanks. So there's no muddy areas in our backyard. Okay. Um, you know, we, it's pretty flat all the way back, back where it's behind the fence in the very backyard. It gets muddy back there in the um, easement. But in right. our yard itself, it's, it's pretty good. Okay, thank you. Um. Are you going to be adding more driveway to go to your um, garage? You are. Okay. That's the parking area that they were, that the board was discussing. Yeah. Okay. Right. I haven't seen it. That's why I'm asking. Understood. All I can see is what's on there, and so I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think it was 20 feet. Uh, right. They were going to extend. The request is to extend the driveway 20 feet backwards. How are you going to um, are you going to be heating this garage? Yes. How are you going to be heating this? Um, the plan was to put a split in, a split, which is kind of like an air conditioning kind of unit. So it's like a standalone unit that you put and attach. Are you running gas to the um, garage? No. Or are you running water to the garage? And you'd be willing to would you be willing to stipulate that you would be running water or gas to this garage? Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? Okay, Mr. Sally. Thank you. We'll call Kathy Muller. Muller, just for the record, you're a licensed professional engineer of the state of New Jersey? Yes. Your license is in good standing this evening? Yes, it is. You appeared before this board quite a few times, as I recall? Yes, I have. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'd ask that she be qualified again. Yes, we will accept as an engineer. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Muller, could we just get your business address for the record, please? Sure. Uh, Paige Muller, Engineering Consultants in Warren Township, New Jersey. And where's that located? Warren Township, New Jersey. 
Warren Township. Township Street. Uh, uh, get the idea. Powderhorn Drive. Powderhorn Drive. Okay. Or by a PO box. <laughs> oh, I got you. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Kathy, your firm prepared the engineering plans for this application. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Would you take us through them, please? Sure. Um, I just pulled up. I'll give you a little history as well. And these are the plans that were submitted for the application? That's correct. Yes, okay. we're not just making sure. Exhibits, just right. making sure. They did 41723. Fantastic. Um, my firm actually did the plot plan for the house that's on the property now when it was a knockdown for the builder. So we have a good amount of history uh, with the property and the builder. And the applicant actually bought it from the builder. So they were the, they've been the only occupant of the home. So. We have the original design drawings, and at the time, the town engineer, uh, Valerie Spies, or Spies, actually made us do as-built drainage calculations on it as well, um, which is a bit unusual uh, in most townships. So we have a lot of history on it, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more later on when we get into the review letters. But what I want to do is just give the board a little bit of context as to where the proposed garage is going to go relative to the neighborhood. Um, you'll see this gray line that follows the boundary with the X's in it. That is the solid fence that you've seen in the pictures. Um, it, on the right side of the property, it follows the easement line. So there's a, it's at a minimum 15 feet off of that eastern property line to the fence on the right side. That little x out area, that's the woodshed that's going to be behind the garage. So the garage is going to, under existing conditions, fall right about where my hand is, 20 feet off of the end of the driveway where it will, it will begin, and it will be along the fence line. The houses that you were talking about before that front on Spencer Road mm -hmm. are approximately 120 feet from the rear line. So 125 feet from the back of their homes to the property line and an additional 15 feet to the proposed garage. So that's, it gives an overview of the area. Have you seen uh, the pictures? It's, a, it's wooded, it's vegetated through there. The types are, are mixed, as you said. Some, some of them lose their trees. There's an evergreen or two through there. Um, as far as what exists in the drainage easement, we don't have any survey data, even from our original file, so I would just ask the town if they have any information to at least point us in the direction that we can locate any structures that may be back there. But again, all of the improvements are gonna be within the fenced-in backyard. So um, we're gonna put a little bit of dirt on the right side just to build it up against the structure a little bit and uh, for the height calculation. So if there's any, not any questions about the existing conditions, I'll switch to the next sheet for our proposed improvement plan. Sorry, I didn't understand what you meant for the height calculation, building it up on the side. So we put some fill along the side rather than expose the foundation. On the right side, that's, these are one foot contours. Um, so we did that to hide the foundation on the right side. So you're not, you're not burying the garage deeper in grade, changing no, the grade, you're it's, just kind of lifting we're meeting grade in the front. Um, what we did is we pitched it up a little bit so that right now the driveway drains towards the back. And there's a flush curb and it, it flows off to the right side. So what we did is we came up a little bit so that that water isn't going to rush down the existing driveway and into the new garage and through the garage. So we lifted the apron up a little bit so the garage sits slightly higher than the end of the existing garage. How much higher? Um, 0. 0.46, <coughs> six under six inches. <coughs> We're even on this side, and then the 0. 0.46 down onto this side. So the existing spot shot right outside the existing garage is 100.63, and we're proposing it 100.67. And that's just so that it's flat along here and it pitches to the right side to hit that existing 100.21. Um, we have flush curb all along the side to try and you know, encourage the water to run over and not concentrate as much as, as we can. So from the 
garage over to the side, um, that's flush curb. It'll also help aid in snow removal. So when we placed the garage, and we had gone back and forth, um, well, let me step back. There. We did a, a new survey for all the existing conditions. And the first thing we did was do a zoning analysis and discovered that the property is already over on impervious coverage, as you've heard. Uh, the overage is 224 square feet. The existing gravel is over 400 square feet, it's 443 square feet. So we believe that there was some miscommunication where they were getting permits for all the improvements of the outdoor kitchen, the hot tub, the, you know, just doing the improvements in general. They even got the woodshed permitted. Um, it was an oversight. They tried to minimize the impervious coverage the walkway that goes from their patio out to the road, for example, is Belgian block curve and in between is gravel. It wasn't finished with pavers or uh, dry lake or wet lake pavers. So I think that was an attempt to reduce the impervious coverage, but everything counts in burners. So to that point, they are existing over. Uh, there's nothing that we can really mitigate. Um, it's all, it's pretty compact. Again, they, they try to minimize the walkways, fire pit area, you want the gravel for the, the safety around it, and then for the overflow around the hot tub, uh, gravel's appropriate. So we identified that we already had an impervious coverage variance. We talked about the size of the garage, what their needs were, and the distance from the house. Uh, the minimum distance between structures is 10 feet. So we had pulled it forward and then we have a 10 foot apron that's unusable. Can't park a car in it, it doesn't solve the, the conflicting, this car trying to get out, this car's trying to get out. Um, like you heard, they have a lot of out of town relatives. If they do want to park in the garage, they could park a car without conflicting with the existing garages. So that's why we pushed it back to the 20 foot um, standard parking space size, usually you hear 18, but that includes an overhang, so it's a total of 20, because you're butting right against a solid wall. Can I interrupt you for a second? You talked about the elevation of the garage so that you could have the water drain, but then where is the water going from there? It's gonna go right where it goes today. So the driveway has a high point in the front, and it, the whole, about from midpoint of the driveway goes down the apron away from the house to a low point at this 100.21 spot shop. And there's flush curb there. But shouldn't you have an inlet there that maybe connects to the well? Well, it all runs overland, and I'll talk about drainage in a little bit. Okay. Um, what happens, and you've got, heard the question asked, where does this property drain to? The front yard drains out to Culberson, and the backyard, everything that comes this way you see by our arrows, will continue to go to the back left corner. So it's this, oops. The curb is gonna force it to go into the back. Well, it's gonna continue, it's going to end up in the same location. <clears throat> so the existing driveway drains off this corner and it flows to the back and the old contours would go straight and then it comes across. But it's not going towards the other property. No, no, it's actually tipped the, the east side or the right side is higher than the left side. So when we did the grading, you'll see by our spot shots, you know, it kind of flattens out here, but our intention is to pull this water to the back. And you can see this 98 is directing, I, I don't have the overall topo, I have the town topo. If I flip to the cover sheet, these properties drain down towards us. They're higher. So all the water from these properties come down through this backyard and continue through this yard um, to the west. So that's the general drainage pattern. We won't be stopping water that's coming through. We'll take it around the new garage um, and it'll continue to flow to the ultimate destination that it does today. Kathy, is the drainage, and if, if you don't know the answer to this, I'm sure Dave or Tom would, but is the drainage easement for underground drainage piping as opposed to a, a area that water can flow into and out? I don't know what's in there's it. There's a pipe. Is it's, there a it's pipe? A town, according to the town map, there's actually a lawn inlet right next to the proposed garage, right where the 
right where the easement where, has an elbow and it goes off site. I mean, I haven't verified that, but that's what we show on our map. There's a pipe that goes along that property line, the side and the rear, and we, yeah, we show an inlet. The easement comes from yeah. Spencer. So, so it's not a yeah. swale area that we want to send water no, to? No, it's an underground pipe. underground piping. Yeah. Okay. That's, I just want to clear that for the record. And I would assume it flows from Spencer to the west, towards the back, and then ultimately to the back corner as well? Yeah. And not pitching up hill? The, the town mapping shows underground pipe that whole distance. Okay. Since we have a, a discussion and a lot of discussion about overall height and you're raising the garage up, did you not consider having just an open grade train that traverses across the whole front of the garage? It's very easy then to pipe it to your seepage pit. So typically, when we have a downhill garage, um, mm -hmm. we don't purposely direct stormwater towards any structure. Um, this is still going around to the side, and again, it's the height is measured relative to the proposed grade. Mm -hmm. So even if I lowered this a bit, the height would still be the same 21 so it didn't affect any average height calculation, no? No, it's at the proposed average grade hmm. um, around the, the foundation. Yeah, because I have a grade drain that goes in front of both of my garages because of height uh, concerns, yeah. It, well, this was, again, I would never intentionally grade anything towards a structure. Hmm. Um, it was a low point that we were taking advantage of um, and modeling the, the existing Right. So that's and did we confirm the height is 21.92? Because I, yes. I think there was a conflict. It's not 22.8. Correct. There was an errant number on the architecture. Um, that extra two point think five. That was an incorrect number. Okay. Um, we are seeking 21.92. So again, that's how we got to the location of the garage. We're complying on the right side setback, so it's allowed to be there. Um, it's actually, the required is 10 feet. We're at 16.6. Uh, partially due to the easement, but it, that's where it aligns with the existing driveway. Um, so that's the gist of it. In terms of the stormwater management, um, since we did the plan and we received the engineers, your board engineers' recommendations, I went back and looked at the stormwater management um, because we have that information from the as-built conditions when it was turned over and they got their CO. And we actually over-designed it. So we'll work with your engineer to ensure that there's sufficient stormwater management on the property that will address what's been built and the proposed conditions. Uh, we did soil testing out there, it's bad soils. Uh, it was 0.1 inches per hour. We had an under drain under the original one. All the roof drains go there now. Um, so it's not that we could pick up something that was uncollected before, uh, but I have all the models, I have all the as-built information, and I'll work with the engineer so that we don't have an increase. And, if the, and again, when we did the original design, it turned out to be over-designed under as-built conditions. So we had some flexibility, and even when I add the additional improvements, we already had that benefit of the stormwater management built in. Uh, the original one had the original plot plan plus a thousand square feet. So we actually had a lot of buffer room in this project when we designed it uh, back in 2014. So we have all that information. Um, again, uh, there were some questions about the doors on the, on the garage. The one at the rear is a little higher. Uh, it's a four inch pitch just for building code in the garage. And the overhead <coughs> door, uh, there's storage space at the back spot that's four feet deep for a lawnmower to access uh, the backyard. Wheelbarrows, lawnmowers, that kind of thing. And then the man door on the left uh, is just out to grade and we do have a concrete pad outside the door. We don't have a walkway, and that pad is also included in our impervious coverage. Um, so we're seeking a total coverage of 21.5% uh, when 18% is allowed 
uh, that number is 1,483 square feet. Oh, and there was a question about the ridge of the garage. So the ridge of this garage is 21.92 feet above the, the, the grade outside. I have an old plot plan. The ridge from the best that I can estimate of the existing house is approximately Now this is the main ridge that runs left to right. Well, it's about 12 feet higher, 11 to 12 feet higher than the ridge of the proposed garage. So looking at the photos, it looks like the ridge along their garage, which is a two-story structure, both two stories with a roof peak will be higher than the ridge of the garage. So looking at the architect's drawing, that looks almost to scale. So again, it's about a 12, 12 foot difference from the height of this structure to the ridge of the house. So this will not be higher than the existing garage. Mm -hmm. Kathy, obviously we don't have Mr. Washington here, but as a member of the design team, uh, is it fair to assume that given the measures that Ms. Stowe described to try to keep it as low as possible and still be able to have the, the swing area up top, uh, if it had been possible to lower the first floor, the garage area, that would have been done? I mean, the, every effort was made, was it not, to keep this building as low as possible? Correct. I don't know the ceiling height. I can't defend the ceiling height in the first floor other than it's, it may be relative to the back floor because it is a couple inches. Um, but the real critical design thing when we're going back and forth, and we we're trying to keep the overage under 10%, although it doesn't apply for a various house and accessory, um, they tightened up the second floor. Uh, and we went back and forth with the manufacturers and the uses, and we heard an average height and swinging a golf club and what they could do. So I can only presume that if the <coughs> ceiling in the garage bay could have been lowered, they would have taken advantage of that height upstairs for the clearance of the golf swing. Because we were much higher, and they worked to bring it down and bring it down and bring it down. So I, I don't, and I, I can't testify as to the height of the garage, um, but I, all I can presume is that if we could have lowered that, they would have and taken the height in the second, on the second floor. Thank you. Did you consider having open rafters on the second floor and not the ceiling that's shown, since that seems to be a limiting factor? I don't know. Joe, did you recall that? that was, a roof. Well, there, was there any talk of having like a cathedral ceiling or open rafters or something like that instead of a flat ceiling in the second floor. I don't think so. I think it's the same. Things that show on the inside. The reason why the drawings clearly show two foot eight inches from the ceiling to the top of the ridge. And if it was open rafters, then you still have the same allowance for a golf swing on a simulator, which is nine feet. That's why I these questions all kind of stack up to the height. Right? Unfortunately, I can't speak to the final architectural designs. Oh. Oh, that's right. You're the engineer. Sorry. <laughs> Correct. Sorry. Want to talk to Sorry. the stormwater? Sorry. I gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. 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 <laughs> Wrong look up. <laughs> Mr. Cambry, did you have a question for the engineer? <coughs> No. Okay. No, she answered it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further questions, uh, I think I'm any additional questions for um, our engineer? I have one question. Yeah. Since since we are going to we are going to be three and a half, roughly three and a half percent over on lot coverage, was there anything considered with drainage on the property? 
um, to make up for that lot coverage over it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We have a dry well shown, um, and then in our research after submitting, the soils are not good. And then looking at the ASGO counts, we're gonna make sure that with everything that's constructed, plus what we're proposing tonight, there's no increase in impervious coming off the property. Um, that solution's gonna be modified, because we always do just preliminary for variance, and then once we go for, we'll do a lock rating um, SCD plan for submission, and also any kind of compliance issues that may come up tonight, and we'll take all of that into account. Any additional questions? I'm, I'm good. I was going to ask if Dave or Tom had anything you wanted to add. You guys are good? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, Can I, we did, just, did, if there's any open yeah, items. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take them. Oh, well, we have our. Sure. I think Dave.
Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Thank you. Um, yes, any, go ahead. Uh, just one comment. I have a question, and it might not might have been for the architect, but do you, did you consider when building, just building onto the three car garage, the two more car garage behind it? So then, it was you know you'd have the whole driveway, you could turn into it. It would be farther from the neighbors. Was that looked at at all instead of? A whole new building. I just refer to the applicant. We would have the same just coverage asking. issues. If oh no! It was I, turned, yeah. yeah, it's just. We would actually probably have more coverage because right now we're going straight, and it's 26 feet wide. Okay. If we turned it from the face of the existing garage to the end of an apron, we no. would get have a little bit more impervious coverage place, here. Just for turning. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just you have mm -hmm. we like other 30 feet is, is standard from the garage doors out. Okay. So it would actually result in a little bit more impervious coverage. Right. Okay. Really, you still have to go to the village. Correct. You couldn't park another car. Um, you know, this has some guest spots, and it would still be a car in here would block a bay. So by having it 90 degrees, you can get in and out of this garage and these three, and then you do have room for a car here and a car here and still be able to use these three. It, it results in a little less jockeying because but all that you would have is- five cars parked in a garage versus five cars sitting out in the driveway. You could always, if you're in the garage, you back out and there's no You would be no jockeying issue. if they were here and okay. five garages kind of look like a, wouldn't be that attractive. Well, you can see it. it yeah. It's a it's a flush. You, you can say no. You didn't consider. It. I'm just wondering if yeah, it was ever. I, I don't think it would not consider it. Okay. Yeah, I don't Thank you. Would solve their issues. Okay. okay. Well. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's not considered. That's, That's, That's a fair question. That's fair. I, I think yeah. It just yeah, was not that look of just like a line of garages. Send the kids off to college. That eliminates the whole. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then they move back. It's not going to be a forever problem. Okay. Additional yeah. questions. I was just going to ask. Um, any issues with stipulating with all the comments and recommendations of Mr. Quinn's memorandum? No. All right, stipulation okay. taken. Thank you. And Mr. Sy, did we um, miss any of your points? I think we covered most of them, actually. Relocated or replaced? Uh, I think uh, they stipulated that. We stipulated that. Right. The light, did we talk about lighting? Was that what we covered? That came up. No. Yep. Yeah. Lighting at doors, the doors both the garage mm -hmm. doors and man doors. Yeah. Only. Right. And then that, I don't have anything else that hasn't been addressed. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Um, so I guess that's another stipulation complying with Dave's memo to the extent they haven't already <coughs> stipulated. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any uh, questions from the public? Mm, we don't see any at this time. Okay, Comments. Mr. Mr. Zelli, any any other witnesses? Madam Chair, of course, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I do wish at this point that I had the architect to be able to answer that specific question yeah. about the first floor. Um, in light of that, what I would ask if the board would indulge me uh, to take a straw poll at this point and try to get try to see where you're all coming from. Uh, there's, you know, questions have been raised, obviously. Uh, and then, depending on how that goes, I might okay, before, five before we get there, client, but, if you're okay, Mr. Zell, I'll just see if there's any comments from the public. Are you okay if we do that first? Are there any comments for or against this application? No. Okay, we don't, we don't see any. That's right. Okay, any, uh, b before we start, are there any additional questions that the board wants to ask at this time? Okay. And also, I mean, I will, as I usually do, would make some uh, arguments about the positive and negative criteria, and if you'd like to hear those first, I can do that as well. As I think you can anticipate what they'll say, but uh, we can do that. Yeah, I think it would be helpful. We'd like to hear everything you have to say. <laughs> Obviously, it's not, it's not a C1. Uh, we're not going to suggest that it is. It's a C2. Uh, so the benefits have to outweigh the detriments. Uh, there are 
at least three purposes of the municipal land use law that we feel uh, are reflected here and are served uh, by the proposed application. Uh, first is A, uh, which is to encourage municipal action to guide the appropriate use of development of all lands in the state in a manner which will promote the public health, safety, morals, general welfare. And in this case, that would be done by providing safe storage of the applicant's vehicles, especially in light of the heightened uh, theft rate that we've been observing, and also by providing a safe environment, uh, which would be the second level of the building, uh, within, within which the applicant and their family uh, would be able to recreate. Third uh, would be, or second would be C, to provide adequate light, air, and open space by constructing a second building detached from the main building, uh, rather than increasing the size and mass of the house, and, and we've talked about that. Uh, and third would be to, uh, it's letter I under the uh, code, to promote a desirable visual environment through creative development techniques, good civic design and arrangement, in this case by constructing an attractive accessory structure, architecturally complementary to the applicant's home uh, and the surrounding neighborhood, and consistent with uh, the other buildings, the other accessory buildings that we've shown you in the photographs, which are in the immediate neighborhood. Uh, additionally, proposed uh, attractive additional garage and recreation space will assist in improving the housing stock and conserving property values in the neighborhood as a whole. Uh, under the Home Builders League case, that is also a uh, purpose that satisfies, uh, serves the positive criterion on a C2. As the negative criterion, uh, the variances can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good, without substantial impairment of the intent and purpose of the zone plan and zoning ordinance. Uh, in this case, as I said, we have several uh, similar structures in the neighborhood uh, that, as far as we know, uh, have not created any kinds of issues from a zoning and master plan perspective. Uh, and we don't believe that this would have any such effect either. Uh, there's been no one here this evening testifying against us uh, or uh, submitting any concerns with the application. Uh, including and especially any of the uh, directly adjacent neighbors who all have been served. Uh, so under that, we believe that we've satisfied both the positive and negative criteria for a C2 variance. Uh, and as I said, I think at this point, I would appreciate hearing a straw poll if we could, uh, so we could be guided accordingly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anyone from the board want to kick us off, have any initial thoughts? I think Mr. Zelli and his applicant are looking to, to get a read on whether the board is um, comfortable with what they're asking or uncomfortable and therefore perhaps they might rethink um, some of the things on here. So I think he's trying to get, uh, he's trying to get a view um, from the board. I'll say so, well, in my opinion. Um, I'm not bothered by one foot 11 inches, this much difference in height of the building. That just doesn't really bother me. And I don't think, I think there's enough screening on that property that it's not gonna bother any of the neighbors. And there are no neighbors here that seem to be bothered. Um, the lot coverage concerned me more, but the fact that most of it is gravel and was previously approved by the town, um, and you are doing something to in, improve the, the drainage on the property to make sure no water exits the property on anybody else's, um, I'm not really bothered by it. You know, I, I don't like it when there's a lot of hardscaping, but I, I don't know. I, I know the town disagrees with me, but in my experience, gravel drains. So I, <laughs> I, I, I'm less bothered by that. Thanks, Ms. Pachar. I would concur with Ms. Pachar. Okay, that's Mr. Yep. Cambria. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. just, just to be clear, I, I think the gravel was not approved. <laughs> Right, just to be clear, I think the gravel was not approved. It was missed or some yeah, was something missed. else. It, it was, was not approved. No, it was not approved, but okay. it bothers me less than hardscaping. Okay. It's just the, the totality of it, I guess. I mean, when I look at, I mean, my opinion is my opinion, but I mean, it seems that the garage in height, in length, in size is, is excessive. Don't need 32 feet to park a car. You don't need nine foot ceilings to park a car. I mean, I understand with the, the comments about one foot 11 doesn't bother me, but um, I have a neighbor that built a five car garage behind my house and he was over and he wouldn't fit the architectural style of your house, but he ended up having to put a mansard type roof on it, flat roof, because of the height limitations. It wouldn't look right in your house, I get that. But I think there was enough suggestions made about where you can rein things in 
without comment from your side. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, I still think the height's excessive and the overall garage is excessive. Thank you, Mr. Pawlowski. Uh, my only comment would be, I, um, hearing the positives and negatives, I would weigh that the positives aren't that many and the negatives aren't that many. <laughs> so so I, I, there's no weighting on these huge positive aspects of this because there really aren't. It's just an extra building that someone wants to use and put some more cars in and have a, a, a nice area. The negative, I also don't see a huge negative. If, if it isn't impacting the neighborhood, if it's shielded, and if the water runoff is contained, as has been stipulated, um, I don't see a, a, a large negative. So I, I see it very balanced from that aspect. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm, I'm if, it, if no one sees it, if it's there for a specific use and it doesn't bother the neighborhood, I, I don't see a big negative on the application. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Do you want me to go or do you want to go? Um, so Ms. Bauman? Okay. Um, oh, I have one, one additional comment. Let's go. I, I like the design of, of, the, of the building that it looks somewhat like an older barn. I mean, we have a lot of barns in this town and we're losing them one by one. And I, you know, I like it when people do something to give that kind of an appearance to, to the property again. Yeah, the front elevation is fine. I mean, it, and it would be a nice 24 foot deep barn. It doesn't have to be a 32 foot deep barn. The elevation is the elevation, that's all. I think the straw poll is going to be difficult for you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zelli. Um, I guess I'm a little less balanced than Mr. Krauss is in terms of the positives versus the negatives. Um, I agree that it's a beautiful design and I appreciate that you're trying to match the, the house lines and you're trying to match the, the architectural design. So, so I do like that. Having said that, the detriments remain even with the secondary structure being pushed back, there is a massing issue, right? We have a, uh, a lot that's less than an acre and we're covering 22% of it or whatever that, that amount is. Um, it's a little different than like a hardship case that we hear where you don't have a garage, right? You have three car garage and we're trying to make it five. And we're trying to do that while also, you know, having all these other beautiful things and your backyard looks very, very lovely but at the same time, it's coming at the expense of gravel walkways and fire pits and uh, you know, hot tubs and outdoor kitchens. And you know, I, I wonder like, what exactly are, are we solving for here? So you know, of course on a C2, we, we just say do the benefits outweigh the detriments. And um, I'm, not, I'm not positive that they do. So that's, that, so when I look at, when I look at the, the, the layout and the site plan and the pictures, there's so much going on. Um, so for me, I think the building is lovely. I like that it's set back. Um, I like that it cleans up having the cars from having the cars parked in the driveway and, and putting them away. But at the same time, um, there's just, there's so much I think piled in there um, and then and then now we need you know an extra and, and an extra foot doesn't bother me on the roof height either but it's well you know but we want the fire pit and the outdoor kitchen and now we want the extra foot for for the golf swing and I respect that but at the same time it's just there's so much going on back there um, if the drainage is covered and it is well screened. We don't have anybody here objecting. I could say I could say that you know it, it's not so bad. So it's it's not such a detriment. But at the same time, when I look at it, I just feel like there's just so much everywhere that it's almost too much. I don't know what the, the minimum depth for a garage is. You know, I, th I think it's like 22, 23 feet, but I don't know that for a fact. Um, if you lost the bump out in the back, like for this, the storage, you know, the four foot bump out and, and just move things forward a little bit to get it, that would get it down to 28 feet. If you could get it down to maybe 20, 70 feet deep, I, I think it would be 
you know, obviously a lot less lock coverage. Yeah, and we're also not guaranteed that the you know, I don't know cars that. find their way to the garage, right? right. We, we have no idea what's going in, right. in the garage. We've heard the testimony for right. sure. Yeah. But, you know, there's refrigerators in the garage, there's a lot of equipment, and there's a lot of lawn equipment such that they're going to have a back door on the garage. So, I don't I see it as a garage shed. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I have that concern, too. I mean, yeah, we, for sure. We can't mandate yes. someone to use a garage. No. Once the doors are closed, they can use them wherever they want, um, within reason, and the cars right. could still be in the driveway. That you is know. true. It's true. true. So. Yeah, so I'm not saying that's for or against. I just, right. I don't yeah. put the weight on, oh, it, it'll be great to have the cars off the driveway. Right. I don't know right. whether that happens I, I am, or not. I'm agreeing with Joe that the depth is a little bit excessive. I, I, I think. So Mr. I think Mr. what Mr. Zelly's vehicle is the longest thing posed in the garage, and that's less than 20 feet. Yeah. Pretty long that's escalating. A, that's a oh, driveway. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. That's a double yeah. can. I've got the short bed. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's so I think what would be helpful, <laughs> what Mr. Zelly and his applicant are most likely looking for is if there's any you know, for, for people on the board who are uncomfortable with the application, mm -hmm. if there's any things that they would make suggestions for that would perhaps make them comfortable with the application, this is probably the time to voice them. Is that what you're looking for, Mr. Zelly? Um, if necessary? Your, your comments have been actually extremely instructive, uh, and I recognize we're the last ones here, uh, but if you could give us five minutes, I'd appreciate it. Thank okay. You. Sure. Any the, other comments the, before Mr. Zelly wants a five minute break? One piece of information that might be helpful, and I know you've got signature and everything else going on, if we did request to be able to come back and hold things in advance for now, how far down the pipe I is that? I think Ms. Kiefer will look at that. Oh boy. Could you imagine down? And that would be to bring the architect back? Uh, I'm sure I would bring the architect back and and, okay. and just as a guess, and, and, and possibly we might be coming back with some changes. Yeah. Okay, and um, it, just as a guesstimate, how, how long do you think the testimony would be? It doesn't have to be an exact, but just for planning purposes. I think even if we made changes, I think I could handle them through that one witness. So it, I wouldn't think we'd need more than 45 minutes or so. Okay, <laughs> Miss Kiefer. Maybe not even that. Yeah, Miss Kiefer, <coughs> if if that was requested after five minutes. Actually, why don't we take a five minute break and Ms. Kiefer will look at that. Um, and we'll I, I can answer that now. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> um, I, I know we, we seem, I believe Mr. Zelly, you're not available on July 13th, correct? Mm. Is that, is that the one where you've been through this already? I think she knows your calendar. Yeah. Yeah. She's good when she knows your schedule too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was July 13th, right? I am in a different town that night. That's right. Yeah, we went through that 13th once. Thirteenth of July. I heard Mr. Zelly say fifteenth. Did I hear? Thirteenth. Yeah. I thought I heard special you say meeting right Thursday. Okay. Thursday. Yes. So I I think that right now the next available meeting after that, um, we do have signatures scheduled for um, the August meeting. Yep. So the next available meeting would be September sixth. And I do have room on the schedule for that. So, it, so yeah, it would be September 6th unless you had somebody you wanted to have <laughs> stand in for you on the July 13th. Which actually is a possibility also. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, okay, I'll five minute break. I'll let the board in on a, a, what's not now, what's no longer a secret. Uh, I'll be joining Post Pollock uh, effective July 1st. Okay. One benefit of that is there are other land use attorneys on okay. staff. Okay. <laughs> so that, that might be a possibility. Okay. Um, um, but if we could have a few minutes. Five, five minute break, sure. okay? Thank you. Five so minutes. Yeah, take a break, everybody.
Okay, we are uh, back in session. Mr. Zelli. Thank you very much for indulging us. Uh, what we would ask is that this uh, application be carried until the July 13th meeting uh, and uh, figure out exactly how we're going to approach it at July 13th meeting, but uh, for now that's our request. Okay, and that would be for the purpose of bringing in the architect? Is that the purpose uh, of carrying? Most or? likely be for bringing in the architect uh, with or without a change in the proposal. Okay. Um, any um, objections from the board if this is carried? I may not be here for the July 13th meeting. Do you have enough people if I'm not? Ms. Kiefer, I think we do have a quorum on the 13th. Yeah, we do. Ms. Including if we do. I'm just Butler hesitating on the 13th because right now I have five applications on. Okay. If you look at your bed. Yeah, I think we got to do it. It's yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I would say anything. Okay. I mean, if you find out closer to the fact it's just not going to happen, then it could be announced. No, as, of, as of right now, it's going to happen. Um, I'll just ask you to be mindful that we have five applications, we'll, so we'll, we'll, we'll ask brief, right? everybody on the board who took very copious notes to keep them <coughs> front of mind so that we don't oh, hopefully have to do a big review with respect to um, the application. Okay, so we will carry that application. Uh, Without right. additional notice, right? That's correct, Madam okay. Chair. Notice to has been provided. This is the notice of the carrying. I'm okay. sorry, I didn't mean to no, start no. your thunder if you were talking. No, it's not my thunder. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, July 13th, <laughs> same time, same place. Okay, you know, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Kiefer, um, I think we're canceling a meeting, believe it or not, right? July 5th, is that right? We did. Okay. So that's still okay. That's still canceled. Um, and then we have July 13th. So we'll ask everyone to be mindful about July 13th. And, and uh, those are all residential applications. Okay. And there is a strong possibility that one of those applications is going to is, is not going to be ready. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, any uh, comments? Uh, are we going to talk about the annual report? Oh um, yes. Again. I didn't want to be the one to bring it okay, up. So, annual, mm -hmm. so I think the annual report uh, is on the agenda and it's also been circulated in advance and I think uh, a resolution has been drafted, is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So pending any additional changes if the board wanted to make recommendations. But okay. so does anybody have any comments or questions? I know we see the um, behind the uh, rear yard setback for the pool. That's that's one that comes up often. And I'm asking this primarily to get it on the record. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we wouldn't address it in the report is because we would want to see we would want the applicants still to come in so that we can weigh in on <coughs> screening lights, so on and so forth. Correct. That's a good point. That's always a question if we, we see a lot of applications, but think about them. How many of them would you just give in a pass to and wouldn't need to have a discussion at all about? Yeah, and, right. and we still do. Uh, a lot of those applications spend a lot of time on screening, right? Yep. And um, appropriate fences and, screening and, and yeah. exactly what it is. So. Yeah, but it's the a only, good point. Yeah, the only way to get by that, I mean, would it would be a change to an ordinance that said you'd have to have something, right? If right. that is the case, right? So you'd have to enforce a six foot screening always around the perimeter of a pool that is in this condition, right? Or something like that. That'd be the only Or way you could change the requirement, or change the, uh, you know, the standard. It, it, right. Um, well, I'm saying if we wanted screening, we'd have to include it in an ordinance, then it wouldn't have to come here because yeah, we would be checking it. We wouldn't have to check it. To some extent, you could include it, but it, it, it's hard to. I'm not yeah. saying we do it. I'm just yeah. saying, okay. Yeah, that would be. Uh, we around it. Okay. I, th I think it, it might be easier, uh, if not better, addressed in terms of creating greater setbacks or positioning on the lot itself or other ways. But you you could add that, include that as an element, but it, it would kind of get a little right. interpretive. Okay. So you couldn't say if it's. Just the, year, uh, the rear 
rear. The pool behind the rear. The pier, yeah, the property. pool behind the right, the house, not the not the property line, the house next to it, whatever that. The rear building line. The rear the building, building line. The yes. building line. Yeah. If it's if it's just if that's what it is, you couldn't say if it's past that line or if it's not past that line, then you must have adequate screening and put these conditions you on it. Could, in the ordinance. but I, I would think. I mean, my own preference would be to have something solid black and white in the ordinance that is measurable in addition to that like a pool has a 20-foot setback so right off the bat a thought might be okay well, maybe it's a 50-foot setback if it's not behind the rear building line something like that in addition to screening uh, i mean just to give it a or to say it can't it has to be directly behind the house that's on the same property not off to the side or something or some other way to to actually measure it first and then to have, there are uh, there are other provisions in the RVs, for example. There is a provision in the um, ordinances, and RVs has to be in the rear yard, and it has to be screened. That leaves some discretion to the zoning officer. Uh, storing boats, when you have a pool on a corner lot, and the, and the pool is visible from the side street, you have to provide screening. When you have a, a walkout basement on a, a corner lot, you have to provide some screening. So there's a lot, of, there, there's a few areas where screening is discretionary um, you know by the zoning officer uh, I if it was if we we're gonna do something like that for pools I personally would, would want to combine that with something else measurable to, to make it easier thanks and clearer okay and this again is for 2022 so this is our it, 2022. yeah so we could always incorporate things for yeah and for we had a huge you, the charts in the report we had a huge increase in uh, cases in in 2021 yes. only half of that in 2022 but that was still double yeah. what we had been seeing so we saw our spike and we'll see maybe after this year how many um, yeah you know we get uh, so yeah we can we can there. take a look at the stats again towards the end of this year yes indeed okay so with that are we um, are we comfortable entertaining a motion on the, the, the uh, we the don't motion? there's no recommendation written into it right now that's it, right um, in the I think the last two years we, we commented on the the, the the number of law coverage cases and said we're going to keep looking at it mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to yeah keep we saying should, that we, shouldn't, we should continue to say that because yeah. that that's probably one of our top issues still right I, I, Definitely, still, I yeah. still think we need a sliding scale for smaller I think the board, the, 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 uh, committee looks at it? the yeah, you can recommend just that the township committee looked at it. You could recommend the township committee look at it, and oh, by the way, maybe consider these things. Or, or I don't think yeah. there's any limit to. That's, you have uh, yeah, pretty much entire. Budget. I, I'd like yeah. to put the comment that we're going to continue to to look at it, and then as we get closer to the end of this year, let's make a real hard okay. um, push to see if we want to put any qualified statements around it, okay. like in terms of recommendations. I think it's a good idea. So far this year, I think we're just down on applications right doesn't feel like we're down on applications. no no well we have it just takes one up on cindy's email yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right okay, okay. Get your folder. so we want a motion on this uh, yeah. okay as, as amended right so uh, i guess we'll entertain uh well, a motion what, so there's a I, i'm sorry no, no i was just gonna ask what the exact amendment do you want to draft it up and then we'll just adopt the resolution at the next yeah, meeting? Yeah, why don't, we'll why don't we do that? Do, so do you, do you know that what we're, make, we're making the comment that... I understand what you're saying. We'll draft it. The only react. thing that will change is the recommendation That's section That's and perfect. we'll distribute that draft, final draft, call it, um, okay. for July. Thank you. Okay, we'll do that then. Yep, sounds good. Any additional comments from members? Yeah, one thing, Ms. Kiefer, I, I, I know that we did not have the Environmental Commission comment on the Stowe application. Should we expect to have that, given that it's being carried into July? As, as long as their meetings are at the end of the month, as long as I get any additional um, information from the applicant prior to that meeting, um, we can give know, them the initial submission. They do have the, they have the yeah. initial okay. submission. Okay, well, can you let them know, though, that we I will. didn't I will. hear the case, so if they oh, yeah. just thought they were going to miss it, because I would I would assume they're going to have comments on the Right, no, I, I, I did give them that submission, and okay. I know that Ellen digitized it and um, Okay, just let, let them know that that will. meeting is not over, you know, this case is not over, so sure. it would be helpful to hear if they have comments. Okay, great. Um, any other comments from staff? 
Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> nice job. Oh, you're much well, choice. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. We didn't have any. Um... Hey, nobody was screaming at me this time. Yeah, so no, I know. So, 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 you, so you're one up. You're one up on Mr. Warner. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 A